So I've had a fair number of requests to talk about how to take a board from rough sawn and get it flat and ready to do joinery. Um, and I did touch up on this a little bit in the pour your table series, uh, but I got a few emails and some requests from folks who maybe either haven't seen that series or just really were looking for a little bit more detail um, around the process. So. Um, I thought I would go ahead and just dedicate an episode to how I go about doing this. Um, and I'll show you some tricks that I use and some shortcuts when I'm doing this by hand to make the process more efficient um, and sort of sidestep a couple things that might be common practice when doing the process by machine, but when we're doing it by hand, we can do things a little bit differently to save ourselves some time and a little bit of work as well. So I mentioned two tools that we're going to that I'm going to use to do this. Um, two planes specifically. The first is a four plane or a jack plane. This is about 15 to 17 inches long. Um, it has a fairly wide mouth so that it's capable of passing a thick shaving. Um, I will frequently take shavings up to um, you know a 32nd to a 16th of an inch thick with this plane. Um, and in order to facilitate doing that, this plane has a camber to the iron. So there's a very distinct curve to the edge of this iron. And that's so that I can take a relatively thick shaving without the corners of the blade digging in. And the second tool I'm going to use, the second plane, after the four plane or jack plane um, is a triplane. Um, this will be frequently be called a joiner plane. Um, I call it a triplane, and I, I distinguished my triplane from my joiner plane by the way I sharpen the iron. Um, specifically, similarly to the four plane, I sharpen my triplane with a camber as well, but the camber is less pronounced than that of the iron of the four plane. So as you can see here, similar to my four plane iron, the triplane iron is also sharpened with a distinct curve or camber um, that you can clearly see, uh, but it is less dramatic, or less camber than the four plane. And the reason for this is that using an iron with a little bit less camber is going to make that surface flatter. Now there's one more tool that you're gonna need before we get started. That's a pair of winding sticks. Now these are simply two straight pieces of wood with the edges plain parallel to each other that we're going to use to check this board for cupping and for twisting. And we're going to use it to check our progress as we plane the board flat. Now to get started, I want to start by assessing the current condition of the board because there's no point in just getting started hogging away material before we know where we need to start planing. Now I like to start by working on the cupped side. Um, you don't have to start with the cupped side. You can start on the convex side. It's uh, completely up to you. I just find it personally easier to start working on the cup side. I think it's easier to flatten out a cup than it is to flatten out a hump. So um, I'm going to use my straight edge and I'm gonna look for the cupped face and I've already determined that this is the cupped face. Um, so the next thing I wanna do is I'm going to do a quick assessment for wind in this board, for twist, because there's no point in starting to hog off material before I know where it needs the most work. So by using a pair of winding sticks and sighting across the tops, we can determine if this board has twist in it, just by looking for where the tops of the sticks are not even. And the point of the long sticks is that it exaggerates any twist in the board. So if I sight across the tops of these here and I move the sticks around, what I can see is it looks like I have a high spot here and here. But I also notice that I've got a crack in the board down this end. Um, 
and it actually looks like that crack might have occurred because of some stress in the board over here. So if I move the sticks up a little bit, it looks like they're a little bit flatter. Now I'm a little bit high over here and over there. Um, now I don't need the full width of this board for what it's intended for. Um, and you can see the crack here. I've got to cut this away anyway. So one of the tricks that we can use to bring this board to flat faster and potentially save some of its thickness is to rip it first. So since I've determined which side is cupped, um, I'm actually going to go ahead and I'm going to rip this strip off first because with this crack here, um, it's just going to you know, make, force me to plane more material off of this face of the board and I'm going to have to cut this off later anyway. So I'm going to rip this before I get to planing it. So now that I have the board ripped, I'm going to give it one final check for cup and twist just to make sure that I'm going to be working the right side. Okay. And I'm just going to, you know, I made a, a mental note of the high spots, the major high spots that I want to work on. Um, and you can also mark those with chalk or mark them with a pencil. Um, so now I'm going to start with my four plane and you can see what I've got here is just a cleat in the gap between the two boards of the top and I'm planing against the stop and I'm going to start by working on those high spots and I saw there was a little high spot here in the center. So now what you can see is I'm planing across the grain um, and now I'm going to start planing from edge to edge. Now that I took that high spot in the center down, I'm going to plane completely across edge to edge to remove the cup. Um, now what you can do here, if your board is particularly prone to splitting along this back edge, planing cross grain, you can uh, cut a little bevel on that back edge with just you know two or three swipes of the plane and that'll help to prevent any spelching on that back side. Um, I don't expect to have a problem as long as you have a really sharp iron it's usually not a problem with the cambered iron but just to be safe I'll make a couple passes there. Alright, now what you can see is that this board has a noticeable scallop to it from plating across grain with that heavily cambered iron. But now we're going to switch to the triplane and we're going to remove this scalloping by planing diagonally across um, and we're going to bring this board to flat and remove any of that last twist. Now recall, this iron has uh, much less camber than the four plane iron, so it's taking out the deep scallops left by the four plane and bringing this surface more flat and true. And it's also set to take a shallower cut than the four plane. Now as you start planing with the four plane, you're going to feel it and see it and hear it skipping. Something like this. What's happening is the four plane is riding over the tops 
of the high spots, the, uh, over the peaks of the valleys, skipping over the low spots and just cutting off those high ridges. As we progress, the ridges become shallower and shallower until we hit the bottoms of the ridges and the foreplane takes a full, I'm sorry, the triplane takes a full shaving. You know, this board should be mostly, mostly flat. Feel what could be a high spot right around here. Okay, now you're gonna feel still a little bit of scalloping in the board, and that's just the nature of planing with a cambered iron. But, I'm gonna check the board And I don't see any twist. Now the tops of these winding sticks are even, so there's no twist in this board. There's a couple little rough spots left, but I'm not gonna worry about those at this point. Those are small areas that I can take care of with a smoothing plane later. All right, now that I have this face planed flat, and smooth enough, ready for joinery, um, I have a decision to make. Do I wanna go ahead and plane this board to a specific thickness and flatten the other side, um, or can I move, move ahead, move on? Um, and this is one of the little shortcuts that we take working by hand. Now, you know, if you're used to working by machine and surfing your surfacing your lumber by machine, you would most likely flatten this first face on the joiner and then pass the, pass the whole thing through the planer, which would flatten and thickness the other face at the same time. Um, so you're probably used to working with stock that's say a consistent three quarters of an inch thick. In the hand tool world, we don't have to do that. We're not constrained to work to a specific thickness. Um, for the particular piece that I'm building for the cases, I don't particularly care what the final thickness of these boards are. It could be 15 16 of an inch, could be 7 8 of an inch. Whatever it is, I, I'm not really all that concerned with it. So for these pieces that I'm going to use to glue up and make panels for my cases, uh, I'm not going to go and thickness this to any set particular dimension. What I'll do next would be to match plane these two boards, put them together face to face, match plane the edges and glue up a wide panel. And the back side of that wide panel will then be still roughs on like we see in this board here. Then I can go and flatten the entire panel instead of flattening the board separately, gluing the panel up and then having to flatten the panel again. So what, in essence, what I do is I save a step. Um, I don't have to plane the back of this board. I don't have to plane the back of the mating board that I'm gonna glue to this to make a panel. All I have to do is plane one face, put those two boards face to face, and match plane the edges, open them up like a book, and now I have a wide panel with one face plane smooth, the other face plane rough, so then I would just plane the rough edge. Um, but what do you do if you do need to have a panel squared up on four sides? Um, you know, you may be working with something like a drawer front. Um, if you're making a drawer front, you do have to plane that board on all four sides, get it flat and true and square on all six sides, as a matter of fact. Um, so what do we do in those cases? Well, let's take a look at how to do that now. So here's a piece that I flatten one face. You know, we could say this is about the size of a, a large drawer, a large to medium drawer on say a, a chest of drawers. Um, in a case like this, you may want to plane this and size this to four square before you do any joinery on it. Um, so how would we proceed once we have the face square? Well, the next thing that I would do would be to plane it to final thickness. 
So if I needed to have a particular thickness, I would set a marking gauge to that thickness. Um, you know, and one of the easiest ways to do this is just to use your chisels as a gauge. For example, if I wanted the board three quarter inches thick, I could take this three quarter inch chisel rather than a ruler, set my gauge to that three quarter inch width, and now I know that it's three quarters of an inch without going through the messy process of trying to get it measured you know, using a ruler. Um, in this case, I just want to flatten the other face of this board. I'm not so concerned about the thickness. I actually want to maximize the thickness of the board. So what I did is I set the gauge to the minimum thickness of the board where it is now. So this particular, this corner down here is the thinnest area on this board currently. So I set my gauge to just a hair under that thickness and I'm gonna gauge all the way on all four sides, all four edges of this board, all the way around to that thickness, referencing off my flat face. Okay, now that I have the board gauged to thickness, I can go ahead and go back to my four plane and plane this board down to that gauge line. Let's get an idea at how efficient hand tools can actually be. And just for reference, you can see the edge of the board here. I'd say I'm planing off probably a fat, oh, maybe three thirty seconds of an inch. So one thing that you might notice here is that I've switched from the four plane to the tri plane um, after a fairly brief amount of time using the four plane. Um, you know, I had already I had cleaned up all the rough saw marks off the face of the board and just switched over to the tri plane to go ahead and clean up the four plane, the scalloping left from the four plane. Um, unfortunately, I probably should have gone a little bit farther, maybe, you know, two or three more passes with the four plane to remove a little bit more thickness because what you're going to see is that I'm spending a little bit too much time removing thickness with the triplane rather than just removing the scalloping from the four plane. Um, at this point, if you kind of look, the board face is pretty much already flat. Um, and if this was the other side, or the first side, and I wasn't worried about getting this to a particular thickness, I'd pretty much be done with this face already. Um, but what I end ended up doing was spending a lot of time bringing the board to thickness with the triplane because I didn't spend enough time with the foreplane.
Unless you think I was just planing my heart away, not really paying any attention. There's a specific thing that I was looking for as I was planing, and it's difficult to show on the camera, at least while I'm planing, but it's pretty easy to show once I get there. And this is one of those things that probably doesn't become obvious until you do it once or twice and see it for yourself. But there's a line that I'm hoping you can see. Sort of a little ragged edge along this corner here. That's the bottom of the marking gauge line. And that's the benefit of using a gauge rather than a pencil is that I can plane just until I see that marking gauge line. And then I know I'm pretty much there. So that takes care of the two board faces. Plane the thickness, I have no twist. Now I can move on to doing an edges. Now one of the most important parts of accurate handwork is working off of uh, a minimum amount of reference surfaces as possible. In a case like this, when we're working out flattening a board, we want two references. The first, a reference face. The second will be a reference edge. Now I've chosen this face to be my reference face and I've marked an arrow on it to show grain direction for later so that um, when I glue this board to another to make a wider panel, I can glue them both with the grain running in the same direction. Um, but for the demonstration that we're doing here, um, I'm also using it as my reference face. The second surface is a reference edge. And really this can be either edge um, if you have a particular use for one of the edges, uh, for example, if you're making a frame and panel door or a face frame for a cabinet, you're going to want to choose an appropriate reference edge. If this were a long board for um, the style of a door, let's say, I would choose the outside face to be the reference face and the edge that I would choose to be the reference edge would be the inside reference, the inside surface where I was going to mark the joinery for the mortise and tenon for the rails to join the styles. I always like to use the joinery face as my reference face. Um, and I'll go into the uh, references in another episode and how to, how to choose references, but um, just keep in mind when you choose your reference faces, your reference face and your reference edge, those are the only two references that you're going to use to mark your gauge off of or use a square. So if I'm going to square, if I'm going to draw square lines and I choose this as my reference edge, my square is always going to be referenced off that edge, whether it's this side or this side, I'm always going to reference the square off that edge. Similarly, I'm always going to reference the square or the marking gauge off of this face. So I'm going to choose this edge as my reference edge. And I want to plane it square. So I'm looking for the grain direction. And to me, at first glance, the grain looks to be running this way on the edge. So I'm going to drop it into my crochet here. I've got hold fast and I can just jam it in. And I'm going to go Again, I'm going to start with my four plane and I'm going to hog out the middle because the easiest way to make this edge straight is to start with a hollow. Concave edges are always easier to plane than a convex edge. So if your edge is convex, in order to straighten that edge out, the best thing to do 
start in the center and make it concave first. So that's what I'm doing with my four plane. I'm just going to hollow this edge out. Okay. Now I switch to my triplane. Again, make sure it's not cutting in the center so I know it's hollow. All right. Now that edge should be fairly straight because I got a full length shaving. So now I want to make sure that it's square. So I'm going to use my square and I'm going to check it. And unfortunately for the demo, this edge happened to be square. Um, so let's make it unsquare. Okay, now it's not so square. You should be able to see underneath the edge of that board, this side's high, this side's low. So how do we fix that? Well again, I go to my triplane, and this is another reason to use a triplane with a cambered iron. Because that iron has a camber to it, it takes a thicker shaving in the center of the iron as compared to the edges. So we can use that to our advantage. Since we need to remove more material along this edge, we can shift the plane over so that the center is over this edge, the high edge, so that we're taking more material off here than we are off the low edge. In essence, we're taking a tapered shaving. As I plane, I'm going to gradually move that plane closer and closer to being centered on the board. So after only about four shavings, I've moved back to center and I'm going to check again. And it looks like I'm still a little bit high on that side. So again, I'm going to go back, make sure I'm still planing that hollow in the center. Go back to taking a thicker shaving on the this edge of the board. Shift the plane over slightly. And now back to center. And we'll check again. The edge is square. and the edge is straight. Mark it as my reference edge. Now, if I need to fit this board to a drawer opening, let's say, I can use another tool, basically a very large marking gauge called a panel gauge. Um, and again, it's nothing more than a very large marking gauge. So I'll loosen that up. And in this case, I'm just going to set it to be the narrowest width of this board because I don't need to plane this to any particular width. If you did, again, if you were making a drawer front, um, you could use your panel gauge set it to the width that you need scribe your board now once your board is scribed to the particular width that you want um, you can rip it first. If you've got a lot to take off, just take it over to your saw bench, make a rip cut, or we can plane. If we just have a little bit to take off, we go back to the four plane and we start cleaning that edge up.
and we can start hogging material off. And I'm pulling off probably about a sixteenth of this edge, maybe an eighth of an inch. Okay. And as I get close to that line, and I will switch to my four plane, I switch back to the triplane. And I'm just gonna plane until I hit my scribe line. And if I hit my scribe line right, should be square the whole way down without having to make any adjustments because I scribed both faces off of an already square edge. So by just planing down to the scribe line, I now have this edge square, <coughs> excuse me, to the reference, fa reference face here. Um, the last thing to do, <coughs> <coughs> excuse me, the last thing that I would do, again, if this were going to be for a drawer, um, would then be to cut it to length. So we could square up one end on a shooting board, say, or you can just cut it square with a saw and clean it up with a hand plane. Mark your length, cut your other end to the proper length, true that up to your scribe line with your shooting board or just a regular hand plane, and there you go. You've got your board four squared or six squared, whatever you want to call it. So I hope you found this more in-depth look at truing up stock by hand valuable and useful. Um, you'll be able to put it to use in your own shop. You can see with nothing more than a couple of inexpensive uh, used planes, um, a few tools that you can make yourself in your shop. Uh, it's very easy to take rough sawn boards turn them into beautiful lumber, ready for joinery. Thanks for watching.